dogs need to have a purpose. They need to know what their job is. They're a pack animal, so they're a social creature like us. Even if it's just being a mate like old Paces, although he is my main pig dog, but he's also a mate. We humans aren't too much difference. We need a purpose too. Something to look forward to, something to love, something to do. The best dog will turn rogue if not given a purpose and a bit of love. If he's just kept in a box all day on a chain. Or left to his own devices and no pack by himself. A stock proof dog in the wild will take three days of hunger and he'll start chewing on possums again and chasing deer and eventually the farmer's sheep and ducks and chickens. And even the best pig dog in the world, not hunted for a while, will start catching mice in the field like Poe does. They got a prey drive. You and I are no different really. There's things we need to do too for us to keep us well and healthy. How you going brothers and the casual sister joining us today on the Brochet Club? Yep. We need a purpose, all right, and so do our mates. I say this often on the channel, if you're in a bad place, go and talk to somebody. Chances are you won't because you don't feel like it. Or if you know a mate that's in a bad place, go and talk to him. And it is important to talk. But it's also important not to ruminate. Because all of us have got struggles and problems. You might have a health struggle or a physical Health, you know, it could be a migraine headache or bad feet or you might be losing your vision or something and that, that could be a real challenge to you but thinking about it and ruminating over all the time won't help you you could have an emotional or a mental problem that you're going over and over again and you're not going to solve it inside your own head and what I say to people whatever sort of problems they've got particularly those that cause depression and anxiety is to get out and do something, do anything even if it means going and helping somebody else with their firewood or shift flat or clean up the street or just do those jobs, just get off your ass and do stuff. Because sitting around talking about your problems makes them worse. I don't subscribe to going and having counselling all the time and talking about your problems. I subscribe to getting out into the field. Yes, the counsellor has a place and they'll give you tools, but to be constantly doing it year after year after year I don't see that it can really achieve anything other than cause you to ruminate and go around and around with your problems. Problems that have a, a place, they are there to make us think about shit and to sort it out. If you can't sort it out, then you drop the bastard and you move on. And it's easier said than done. And I know that myself because I've held on to shit too long myself, particularly with my physical health problems. I tend to often think about it a bit too much how I could improve what I'm doing. And sometimes it's just good to get on with life and live it. I've come up with a new motto for myself recently. I made it up yesterday, or the day before actually, because I've been suffering from pericarditis and I didn't really think I was up to playing this gig, but I thought, hold on a minute. Singing songs is good for me. I was booked at St. Patrick's Day in Blenheim at the Biddy Cates Irish pub. And as I was driving down the road with my heart a bit sore, because I hadn't had my medication for three days, because I can't take it, can only take it 12 days in a row. Coltracine is something you've got to go on and off, because it's a toxin. And I've been off it and I was feeling a bit crap and I said to myself, you know what mate, we all got to die. And I'm going to die living. I'm not going to live dying all the time. And I just dropped it, got on, had a good gig, good night, back on the meds now. Feeling a lot better than I was. And moving forward. And it's the same with everything. I came across a crossing. It was a crossing on the road. A zebra crossing where you stop and you give way to the pedestrians. And there was a whole bunch of teenagers from college in Nelson, and there was probably about a dozen of them. And I hit the brakes and stopped because they were walking across the crossing. You know, not one person looked up to acknowledge me, to thank me. They were all either on their phones or they were looking at their mates, but not one of them turned around just to give me a, a friendly gesture and I thought, you know, this new generation that we've bred has actually become a generation of entitlement and I don't think that they're having enough um, what's the word I'm trying to find without sounding politically incorrect, I don't think they're having enough actual uh, hard work put in front of them that they've got to do in terms of how life really is and I'm, I fear for them when they get out in the real world because I've been told, as a younger generation, you're great. I mean, the Weekbix triathlons, I remember when they came around, everybody got a prize, and I thought that was a dumb idea, because life isn't like that. 
I certainly haven't got a lot of prizes for a lot of the jobs I've done. I've often come last or or second to last and, and things in life. So this generation that can't even look up to acknowledge somebody stopping to give way to them to cross the road, which will be a courtesy, is in for a bit of a shock. And I, I think they're going to find it tough. I mean, we've found it tough, but I reckon they'll find it tougher. I don't think it does you any favours to, to be like that with people. And suffering is where we build resilience through suffering and challenges. If you don't build resilience, then you die or you fall on the wayside. But all the resilience that I have in my life has come from my own suffering and the challenges that I have. And I'm resilient. I've, I've had a lot of challenges in my life. My life was a challenge from the very, very beginning. From the very first day I can remember, I had a challenge. I was knocked to my feet, literally. And I can, I can remember all the challenges and how I overcame them. And it built resilience. And even though there's still challenges, we all have challenges. You've got challenges all the time you're going to get up and rise up the next day and be a better bloke than you were the day before. So I say to this now, if you're watching this, I know that you've got resilience because you're still here listening to me. I know that you're strong. I know you've been through shit time because you're still here. You didn't you didn't fall by the wayside. And I hope that your challenges and, and all the struggles that you have have also made you resistance and your breath smells like sheep shit. You've been eating sheep shit, haven't you? Yes, you have. You've been chewing it. Yeah, you dirty old bitch, po. You've been eating sheep shit. I can smell on your breath. That's all right, mate. I don't really give a fuck. Yeah. And the challenges that you've had are why you probably are still here today in a lot of ways. If you'd had life really easy and you've been given that sense of entitlement, you might have not got past some of your struggles. I know some of you listening to this would have had times where you were so crook you thought you were going to die. I know what that's like. I know some of you would have even contemplated taking your own life because the pain, whatever sort of pain it was, was too hard. And aren't you glad that you didn't? Aren't you glad that you, you pushed on through? And tomorrow you'll be a better bloke, or a better sister for that matter, a better woman. We do get tougher as we get older, but we also get weaker in another sense. We get physically weaker. Our bodies as we age don't bounce back anywhere near as much. When we fall down, we get back up, but it takes us longer to get back up. When we go hard out in the bush, whether we're hunting with our dogs or we're going on a bike ride or a run, we don't just get up next morning and feel good. We we ache, we hurt, and that's that's what that's what lies ahead. But getting old is a luxury not everybody gets to have. Apo, plenty of pig dogs that didn't make it to your age. She's about 12 now. She's grey, a bit like me around the muzzle, but still enjoying life. She's a resilient dog, aren't you, Po? You've had a few scars, mind you. She learnt pretty quick. I reckon women are brighter than us men because I was talking to my mate Harb this morning about mountain biking I said you know you and I mate we've got so many injuries from all the things we've had in our past life and uh, look at uh, your wife mate she's been mountain biking as long as you and she's got virtually no injuries and uh, look at my my girlfriend Julie like she's been she's biked around the South Island three times She's got no injuries. I said, look at you and me, mate. We're full of injuries. I reckon us men are stupid. We do stupid things. And he said to me, you know, yeah, but we had a lot of fun doing it. And I said, yeah, but for that moment of fun, wouldn't you like to be injury free today? I sure as hell would be. I think there'd be a lot more pleasure. So we've got to learn to, to, to go a wee bit easy on ourselves. And if I could start life again, there's some things I would have taken a bit easier. And that's the, that's the thing about life, isn't it? It's the lesson that you learn as you go along. And I do pace myself these days because of that. I do pace myself and I'm very very grateful for every day that I wake up because there uh, certainly come a day where I don't same for you all of us have to go sometime all of us have to die sometime but as I said to myself when I was driving out to Blenheim to that gig I'm gonna die living so if you're somebody who is suffering from depression and you're in a bad place or you've got something by all means talk to a mate it's important but don't go over it and over it and over it don't ruminate ain't going to do you any favours at all. It doesn't make it really better. You might be going over it and over it to find an answer. Sometimes there isn't an answer. Sometimes things aren't fixable. Sometimes they're just manageable. Some things you just learn to manage. There are some things that can be fixed, but a lot of things stay like they are, and you just learn to manage them. And it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to have something that's not quite right. I, uh, I have pain management. I have sleep management. I have a lot of things I manage that I can't fix anymore. And I'm very accepting of that there. Hey, Pace, damn right. 
I'm grateful. Grateful for my mates, grateful for my dogs. <laughs> I wouldn't be without my dogs, never. I love them. I would actually, I would keep pace just as a pet if I knew he wasn't getting himself killed. I trust he's got smart enough to make it through, but he may not. It'll break my heart if he ever does get a, uh, a hook in the wrong place. I do everything to get to the bale as soon as I can if he gets the big one, but I'm also uh, wide awake to the reality of being a pig hunter with dogs and I've lost me for me. Look at the scars on the little wanker. He's covered in this whole leg's been ripped up. Look at that line down there. He's had his back opened up here. He's just covered in them. That'll happen. Anyway, brothers, just a 10 minute video today. I hope this one finds you well and if you are going around with something inside your head, don't talk about it too much. Go and go for a walk, do something anything at all get out and make shit happen it's the best thing you can do it's this dog just thing oh you got a rat babe she's looking at something over there little paste took off tail wagon but right, i'm going to do another couple of buckets of water for the ducks because there's no water down here and i'm carrying water down doing me farm boy exercises just to uh do something keep the ducks in water I should really be chopping their bloody heads off and sticking them in the freezer, saving yourself a pile of feed and walking, but I actually enjoy the exercise. It's a beautiful day, beautiful day in Tasman. I just did the St. Patrick's Day in Blenheim, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And that gig will be on my Patreon if you guys want to watch it. I'll keep it on there. Come on mate, I'm going. And this paddock's all like dog, dog proof, can't get out. Well, you could jump over a fence I guess if you really wanted to, but they got the free range. Have a great day, brothers. Go steady and check on a brother if you know a brother that's struggling. And I'll catch you in the next Bro Check Club video. See you later. Come on, mate, let's go. Good dog.